О, това е казан за варене. Посредите са някакви оригинални между другото. Много на стената. Да правя снимки вече? Това може ли? We needed two kettles to reach the temperatures that the uh, warts had to be like had to reach. So this is warts, which is malted barley with water. I think you guys learned that in the previous room. So the kettles are numbered. If you guys look at the target-looking uh, signs above them, they're numbered. So we've got number one here. Number two is the one nearest to us. Number three is diagonal, and number four is right here. So in kettles one and two, what would happen is that it was at 37 degrees in kettle one. They would actually check this because it's body temperature. So back then the, the workers would just dip their elbow in. And then they would put it into kettle two, they would put a third of it into kettle two and bring it to a boil, then put that third back into number one. And then do that again. Take a third out of number one, boil it, and put it back into number one. This was so that it would increase to the temperatures from 37 to 55 to 65 and then to 78. After this was done, this was all moved to kettle three where the malted barley was separated from the sugar water. So if you guys go into kettles three uh, after this, you can see that it acts as a sieve. It's a sort of a metallic uh, plate with holes where the barley would get stuck. And then they would send the barley, since it was still nutritious at this time, they would send the barley to a farm for feeding cattle or, or uh, pigs. Um, and the rest of the work would be moved into kettle four, where uh, the hops was introduced. So the hops is the flour that you guys heard about. It gives the foam, the bitterness, the natural preservatives, all that good stuff. Um, and after uh, the wort was boiled with the hops, It would be separated again, and the beer, this beer at this point, but not alcoholic, would be pumped up in, by this pipe into what, like, above us was a sort of beer swimming pool for it all to cool down, okay? So above us, it was just a huge room that would hold the beer for it to cool down before introducing the yeast. Because if you put the yeast into this uh, hot mixture, it would die since it's an organism. Then, after it was cooled down, the beer would be put into a vertical fermentation uh, tank where the Heineken A yeast was introduced. This would ferment for seven days, and then it was moved to a horizontal lagering tank. There, the residue of the yeast would sink to the bottom, and after 21 days, it was cleaned up, filtered up, and then you're left with your perfect Heineken beer. Oh, nice. Yes, thank you for listening. I hope that was clear. Room with eight numbers. <laughs> 
<laughs> but it will be super special stores. When the third closes, I'll start explaining. <laughs> gold and it's champion's color. Then second of all, we're just gonna tilt our glass a bit like this. Why are we doing this? To look fancy. <laughs> and then we can smell the beer. Expert says it has a fruity smell. Can anyone guess the fruit inside? That smells like? Banana. Bananas. What? Really? Yeah, like bananas. But then a lot of people answer beer, which is fair enough. <laughs> and, then, and then we're gonna enjoy our beer, which is the most important part, right? But make sure you're gonna take a very big seat because we want to go through that thick foam layer that is gonna protect the, pop, the bubbles in our beer. So does every, anyone know how we say cheers in Dutch? Close, exactly, as it's written there. So now I'm gonna say three, two, one, and then we're all gonna scream Close together, right? right? Three, two, one. Bro! Enjoy, guys. So you can follow me over here to the counter where you can enjoy your fresh onion beer. But guys, don't forget that then you can still use. You can't get a boy out of the cold, for sure. Let's go to the movie. Не ме пим ги, бе. Снимаме с тях и ги пим това. Е, аз исках да се запазя, бе. Вземи си да е. Антинари. Робен Ван Пърси, Лионел Меси. Това го е носил Меси Парти. Това ако не е на Диджи Друба. Описал, че ще са Сайн Бай Жозе Мауриньо. Че ще това вземи ти гуми ли са, батко? За хондата? О, то няма грайфер, те ще губят полицайте, бе. До тази ти много трябва да накарам, бег. И баланс не е правил. Не знаят ти гумите, майна. Абе, пич. Абе, бега от тук. Абе, бега от тук. Бах ти гумите. Бах ти гумите. 
Rolt op zijn stapje bureau. Goeie barra. Oh yeah. De vrouw is dus een barra. Daar is het zo. Kom, barra. Ja, maar het is om. Something that's hanging off of them that you don't usually see in other cities. Exactly. The beam and hook. The reason we have these is because a lot of these houses actually used to be businesses. And so when it rained a lot, flooding was not a rare occurrence. And it needed a way. The houses here are very skinny, right? Yeah. Yeah. Very Which is very cute. It makes the city look really nice. But the reason they're actually like this is because these houses used to be taxed based on wind. And so oh. If you see a really, really white house, then you know the family that lived there was probably very wealthy. But to save money, of course, most people build their houses upwards instead of sideways. So that's why they're so tall and so skinny. Uh, canal in Amsterdam, around 16,000 euro is and also every other one in the main but this river is completely natural and if you look and if you look to your left right now you're gonna see the national opera and ballet house now this building actually has a nickname which is stopra and there's a few different stories that i've heard about how it got its nickname but the most popular one is that when this building was being built a lot of people were against it they were protesting because it's so big and it doesn't really fit the aesthetic of the city, as you can probably tell. And so people nicknamed it, nicknamed it Stop Rough, meaning Stop the Opera. And it just stuck. And also, if you look to your left now, as we turn, you'll see the Hermitage Museum. This museum actually used to be a widow house. So it was a home where women could move into and live there as soon as their husbands died in the war. Nowadays, of course, it's a museum. Grab your husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, best friend, or like me, if you're like me, grab your beer and give it a nice big kiss because your husband will always love you back. Very sweet, very romantic. We actually get a lot of proposals here. The sunshine here, when you see it has a bunch of drawings, it's yellow, it's beautiful. It would even remind you of an Italian architecture. And that's because one smart architect, uh, just before I think it was announced, because Amsterdam has rules regarding architecture and it has to stay the same way and similar to other buildings. But this guy sneaked his way in and uh, made this really astonishing uh, work of architecture, which you will not see anywhere else in the city, because the houses have to look somewhat in any way. Now, uh, we were talking about looking into people's windows, 
which we do not recommend. But if you were to do that, now is the time. You can see we're passing sorry, by a bunch of houses uh, where people live. Now, also, uh, if you're wondering if it's comfortable to live here with all those boats passing by, this is uh, Slope Street for uh, the canals. Uh, maximum um, speed you can go here is six kilometers per hour, and we're not allowed to play love.